Thank you very much, all four of you. Uh, you. This has clearly stimulated a lot of discussion. We have dozens and dozens of questions, all of which we won't be able to get uh, through. Um, I just have one little story. I interviewed the uh, Minister of Defense in Iran uh, a few years ago, and I remember being struck when he said, if only we were as naughty as the North Koreans, meaning have a bomb, maybe we'd be getting American aid. Uh, so, a lot of questions to begin. Let's, uh, there's one to each panelist, but I think let's have uh, Bob and Hans weigh in on this one. How long until Iran has a nuclear bomb? You, you often get confusing answers to this question uh, because it, it depends what you're really interested in. If what you're really interested in is the minimum length of time uh, it would uh, take uh, Iran, starting from now and assuming a decision to get the bomb, uh, actually to, in, to go from low enriched uranium to high enriched uranium to fabricated device, maybe tested and so forth. Uh, my, my own sense is that uh, Iran uh, is not determined uh, to get to a bomb as soon as possible. Uh, I'm convinced uh, that, at a very minimum, uh, Iran wants to keep open the option uh, to pursue a nuclear bomb, a weaponized nuclear device. Uh, I don't know that they've decided when they need to do that. Uh, but uh, if you uh, simply look at the minimum length of time it would take, assuming they had already decided they wanted to have a weaponized capability, uh, it could take perhaps uh, a few years. I don't want to be more specific on that because it takes, uh, there are all kinds of assumptions that go into uh, the range of estimates. Hans, do you want to comment on that? Well, I agree with Bob Einhorn. I, I've always thought that the more interesting question is to focus upon is can one persuade them to do a stop enrichment? Uh, because once they are there, they, they, ha they are closer to the bomb. And uh, we, have, we have lost a number of years, I think, in rather poor negotiations. Uh, it's not accurate to say that the U.S. has been ready to sit down at all times to discuss with the Iran. After all, I remember that Condoleezza Rice was Secretary of State. It was said, stated that she was ready to come and sit down with them, provided that they had suspended enrichment first. Well, that was a hopeless approach, and I think much time was lost for negotiations. And Jim, I think you wanted to say, yeah, add just something. A couple of quick points. Um, if Iran takes the light enriched uranium it has now and turns it into heavily enriched uranium, 90, 95 uh, percent enriched, it could do that probably in months, maybe a year or a bit more. Would it then have a bomb? It needs to design a weapon, but a primitive weapon such as we used at Hiroshima, the so-called shotgun design, which uh, is very simple and is on the internet and the rest, would not, needing to design that would not slow them up much. And if all you wanted, if all they wanted was something that would go boom, have a mushroom cloud, emit some radioactivity, and be a test up in their northern deserts, I would suggest that could be done probably within months to a year or two. If one is talking about an implosion warhead of the sort we used at Nagasaki that was carefully designed to, to uh, and compress the frictionable material uh, in such a way as to make possible a lighter warhead, something that could fit on the nose cone of a shahab, I think in, some, in those circumstances one is probably talking about several years. And so you need to be precise when you're asking people a question, what kind of nuclear weapon and to do what? If Iran wants to be a nuclear power and set something off, I would suggest it might not be all that long. Thank you. Kareem, uh, there are lever several questions about uh, sanctions and uh, the impact on the domestic situation. Um, if Iran decides to better its ties with the international community, how will that affect the internal opposition? Uh, and secondly, could you comment on the proposition that the U.S. should side with history and support the Greens? And does that mean we support support their opposition to the IAEA deal? <clears throat> In terms of what um, um, sanctions, right, sanctions do for, for the opposition, um, 
from, from my vantage point, I think what would be the most devastating blow to the regime is not an amplification of existing sanctions. Um, but if you ask me what is the one thing that could be most painful to them, it would be a precipitous drop in oil prices. Uh, one dollar drop in oil prices is about $900 million lost annual revenue for Iran. Um, so I think that uh, a drop in oil prices, you know, how that happens in the short term, whether we ask Saudi Arabia to increase its output, um, you know, it's, is unclear. But I think that would be far more damaging to sanctions. And when you talk to people in the opposition, um, they give you mixed reaction. There are some individuals who believe that um, sanctions would be hurtful to their cause, and I've heard others who believe it would be more helpful uh, to their cause. But I think there is a consensus amongst them that if there is sanctions, they should be kind of quote-unquote smarter sanctions which focus on um, political leaders in Iran, not blanket sanction sanctions which, which uh, target the entire population. Um, in terms of the second point, um, and should the United States simply side with the people uh, against the regime? I have to say that I, I thought uh, Jim Wolsey's uh, presentation was very compelling. Um, and I think the idea that we need to make it clear that we're on the right side of history is very important. Um, at the same time, I think we can walk and chew gum at the same time, meaning we can um, have a dialogue with Iran about these matters of urgent, uh, these urgent national security matters, not just the nuclear issue, but also uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, but we can be very outspoken about uh, our concerns, about their inability to adhere to international standards of justice and human rights and, and um, civil liberties. And what I've seen the last few months, this was a, a legitimate concern that I had, that by engaging the regime, we could somehow pour cold water on the momentum of the opposition. So far, that hasn't been the case. Uh, we saw just last week um, there were uh, full protests. But I think the Obama administration uh, could be doing a bit more uh, and making it clear to the Iranian people um, that it recognizes which is the right side of history. Great. Uh, Bob, let's, uh, another question for you. Should negotiations with Iran break down, do you believe targeted sanctions, either targeting specific institutions like the Boniads or foundations uh, or expanding banks, insurance, shipping, and so forth, um, could be effective in terms of the time and the clock issue? Yeah. I think we've, we've learned quite a bit over the last couple of decades in the application of sanctions. Uh, one thing we've learned, and we learned this uh, in the uh, <laughs> first uh, uh, Gulf War, the first Gulf War sanctions uh, against Iraq, uh, is that uh, sanctions can be counterproductive uh, if they're applied across the board and they affect uh, the population and cause great humanitarian distress. Uh, I think if uh, pressure is ratcheted up, it needs to be targeted pressure. Uh, and, uh, and to go after elites, go after the, 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 cause of the sources of the problem, uh, the uh, Revolutionary Guard Corps, for example, and its many economic interests would be, I think, a valid uh, target, an important target. But uh, we believe targeted sanctions are going to be much more effective than blunt sanctions that will tend to rally the Iranian people behind its leadership. 